It was I don't know what? why we can't hear. It started it. It's not six o'clock yet. I oh. hi guys, can you hear me all? Yes. I don't know if we all can, but we can. Good evening, how are you all? Good thanks, and yourself? Yeah, I tell you what. 2020 is going to go down in the annals of history, eh? <laughs> Certainly will. Okay, I'm slowly but surely um, getting everybody here on. We'll just give uh, people a couple more minutes to get on in time for... Um, meeting um as as you come on if you can just mute, mute your microphones and uh, switch off your um um uh, video it would be helpful and then we can um pick it up from there There we go, admit. Um, are you able to see me at the moment? I can see you. Excellent, thank you very much. I'm just busy admitting people. Uh, let me start this presentation. And uh, minimize that and minimize that. Right, we've got uh, 21 participants, and I just want to, uh, you should be able to all hear me and see my screen at this point. The wonders of technology. I'm not as dexterous on Zoom as I am on Teams, so I hope I don't make any mistakes. Um, all right, um, I think we, we have 22 participants, um, and there's nobody in the, oh yes, there are two people in the um, admit, there are two people in the um, waiting room. Um, right, we've now got um, the, everybody in the waiting room. 
Um, I see that there are a couple of pupils, uh, pupils, I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's the way they say the worst of a headmaster, he treats everybody like a pupil. Um, let me just, um, okay, that's all cool. Um, I'm going to mute all except myself. Um, yes. Um, okay, so if you would like to ask a question, then please feel free to um, uh, do so by putting up your hand. Um, and otherwise things can get a pretty hectic online. Um, I'm just admitting people as they arrive. Um, and uh, yeah, it, th this is really um, supposed to be a session of, um, oh, sorry, just a couple of more people arriving, a session where I can answer your questions um, I thought I would take you uh, through a, um, a bit of a slideshow which might answer um, all your questions, some of your questions, and then um, we can uh, uh, answer any specific questions afterwards. Uh, if you feel like you would like to um, interrupt at any stage to ask a question, please do so, do so and I'll try to... Um, uh, answer as we go along. Um, just to start off by saying that um, we have uh, been really, uh, you know, it's incredible the way we've been able to get uh, the school back on track. Uh, we've got about 140 students um, uh, in at the moment. Um, and it really is going to uh, make a, a huge difference to the exam results, we hope. Although the initial indications are that um, the mock exams have not gone very well. Um, they, there are a lot of um, very concerned pupils trying to do stuff about their, uh, with their results. So um, for the time being, what I'm going to do is, um, uh, I'm just going to start my presentation and uh, take it forward from there and then we will see how we go through you can all see your, the screen sharing okay so basically um, the idea was and this is a lot of common uh, commonality exists uh, exists between what we're doing now and what we did when we brought the other um, pupils back uh, early on in the year um, it, since March you can't believe how much we've actually uh, been through um, to try and combat the scourge that has uh, hit planet Earth. Um, so um, we really, you know, since 20th of March, and we're wanting to um, make sure that uh, the pupils uh, get some sort of progress going. Um, the exam classes are well underway, and uh, we're really hoping that the rest of the pupils uh, can follow suit from next week um, I um, and the uh, so we just wanting to give them uh, the, the seven eights and tens the best part of uh, opportunities just to succeed um, and that's 115 pupils so uh, basically uh, what we're looking at uh, now is that uh, there are already about 147 uh, 148 pupils on campus, and we're wanting to bring 115 more onto campus. That's the breakdown um, between borders and day pupils, and uh, we're hoping all of that will take place on the um, on uh, on Sunday, Monday, and I believe there are a couple of people who um, are having to chew, uh, to to come back on um, Wednesday. I just need to make the point, and many of you who have already got children in the school and siblings, um, Trident College is an enormously complex um, subsystem, a um, e little ecosystem, because we've got children all over, from all over Zambia um, who are wanting to come back in difficult times. And um, the uh, people from around Zambia are questioning our uh, 
their kids going to get some um, um, COVID from the people in Sulwesi and the people in Sulwesi are saying, what about all COVID coming in from the rest of uh, Zambia? And uh, certainly my experience with the other grades, we've admitted it was the first time that the parents from the various sections of the school had the opportunity to talk to each other. And that's something I'm wanting to build on next year is to make sure we have a clear and common purpose in terms of the uh, success of, uh, of Trident. Um, so we need to set, um, help all the various sta stakeholders. Uh, we've now been um, uh, given permission by the Ministry of General Education, the Ministry of Health, um, the um, uh, other stakeholders, First Quantum, I was in contact with them yesterday. Mary Big Hospital is an enormous support to us as we go through this process. And this evening is to talk to you as parents. Uh, we've been talking to the pupils. I spoke to them in assembly today. And we also had an opportunity to talk while they were doing the prefect elections today as well. Um, and then of course the staff members. Um, it's all very concerning to them as well. And uh, the other question is, is it operationally feasible? And uh, this is uh, one of the um, uh, questions we will hopefully address. Um, I'm going to try and go through my slides quite quickly so that uh, we can get to your questions. Um, I just need to be honest and frank and say that uh, we cannot elim eliminate risk, but we can mitigate and manage it um, as best as we possibly can. Um, it is transmitted by people, so the less movement and contact we have, the better. And uh, that really is um, a, uh, um, a, a way of, uh, of uh, trying to see how we're going to deal with it, is that if you have no people contact, um, then there's not going to, be, going to be any transmission. But if you have no people contact, then life loses its meaning as well. And I certainly understand that. Um, it is part of the new reality. For those of you, um, I mean, I, I really don't think, once uh, they said that 8,000 Jumbo 747 jets are required to uh, deliver a yet to be developed um, um, vaccine against it, um, we, for the foreseeable future, we've got to manage it, uh, whether your children are wherever they go. So uh, we've got to try and manage it as best as we possibly can. So the high level plan of action, um, all pupils will be screened. Uh, you would have already received that screening tool um, that I've sent out several times. Some of you would have heard this before because you've got siblings and the other children in the school. Um, and uh, what we, um, we've got that screening tool, which is adapted from a government instrument. And um, that screening tool is very important to us. When we had an admission after the last uh, holiday, um, there was a child during that screening process that had a temperature. They were immediately um, referred to the school nurse. The school nurse was able to determine that it had nothing to do with COVID. If it had to do with COVID, it would have been referred to um, the doctor who is on standby, but more about that later. What is absolutely critical is that the two questionnaires, um, the medical uh, questionnaire um, and the COVID questionnaire uh, must be returned uh, before the pupils come. Uh, it might be their ticket into uh, to Trident, I don't mind, the um, medical, general medical questionnaire is, I'm um, very happy for that to come in from today onwards, um, even yesterday onwards. Um, but the, the two, um, the, the, the questionnaire relating to the day-to-day -day health of the pupils uh, must be returned. You would have all received uh, that. And um, we, we, we had two pupils who uh, did not come back with that and we had to run around to make sure we were in contact with the parents to fill them in on site. So when the kids return on Sunday, Monday, and some of you on Tuesday, um, they really do need to have those questionnaires available. They go, we go through the answers to those questions. If there's any doubt at all, they refer to the nurse. From the nurse, they refer to the hospital. And um, everybody's on standby as far as that is concerned. 
Um, it may be common knowledge, it may be of interest to you, that uh, the Trident residents, and that's the teachers, their spouses, the children, we have been on uh, two period, two week, two two week periods of lockdown. Um, one for the two weeks when the um, exam classes were arriving back, and now um, once again when the exam classes were arriving back after the um, holidays, and we're going to have to do that for a third two week period uh, when your children arrive back, um, because what I have found the experience of the past. Uh, um, five months, is that if we lock down the campus really securely for two weeks and we find that the um, that uh, there's nobody with symptoms and so on, um, we're able to relax the interaction at least between the children um, because we know that we're in a safe zone. It's not completely safe and many of you would have heard my analogy before about a hose pipe and the more holes you prick in the hose pipe, the less irrigation it's going to deliver. So we're trying to just make sure we have as few holes in the hose pipe as possible. And basically anybody coming in and out or out of the gate um, represents a potential pin prick in the hose pipe. And uh, we, we really do need to um, um, guard against that. Um, so, the, uh, the, the lockdown, certainly from the 21st of uh, September for two weeks, will be uh, back in place. So all borders must be in by Tuesday the 22nd. Um, I'm afraid the, the parents are not allowed in the boarding house. The first time we received pupils, we received them all um, at the gate, which was a bit of a nightmare. So now we are receiving pupils at their boarding houses on the veranda um, on a desk, and then anybody who uh, is brought into question from the staff goes to the nurse, Any, all the rest of the people can go straight into the boarding house, but you have to say your goodbyes on the lawn in front of the boarding house. Um, so that is uh, one of the main, main things. And ne the, the next and very controversial issue is we've had to cancel the midterm break. So um, for the pupils in um, the examining classes, it's not as strenuous as it is for the year nines because um, school will close for them between the 5th and the 9th of October. Um, and then they go into exam mode and it's, there's, there's, there's a certain amount of less stress. For the teachers, it also is a little more relaxing, but it remains uh, quite difficult for them. Um, the year nines would have been here for a long time. And we are planning to have um, a year nine camp and do other fun activities during the time that would have been the midterm break. Um, your children who are returning, uh, they've got 10 weeks before the end of the year. So what we've done is we're going to, um, as I've said, sorry, the two weeks access will be very restricted. And then school will close um, at the latest for pupils on the 27th of November. So we brought the school closing um, back forward to the uh, 27th of November so that um, everybody by then would have had the assessment and, um, and we'll be able to determine what happens from there. Um, but uh, that is uh, after the first two weeks of your children returning, um, we might uh, be able to be a, a little bit more relaxed about people visiting and so on, but that needs to be done on a case-by-case -case basis in communication with the, um, uh, the, the, the boarding uh, personnel. Okay, um, day pupils living on both the KGE and uh, um, in Kalambila, um, basically, in order to open the schools, I had to get a reciprocal arrangement between um, what the mine is doing and what we're doing. And um, that reciprocal arrangement means that, the, that we've got three safe zones. The three safe zones are um, Trident College, the TWE and um, the uh, KGE. So uh, Trident uh, is so in, in um, the TWE in um, Kalambila, the KGE in Sulwesi and ourselves. And the pupils may, meet, may move as day scholars or weekly boarders between those three safe zones. 
And the argument is that as the largest income producer and tax revenue base in Zambia, um, and the largest, uh, um, basically, industry, uh, in single industry in Zambia, um, the, uh, the, we've got to have mutual trust between what um, the miners doing and what we're doing in order for um, the uh, uh, status quo to uh, ma uh, ma um, maintain itself and to progress. So, uh, unfortunately, it does mean, however, that uh, children wanting to um, uh, to visit those estates cannot do so. So, um, the, 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 there used to be quite a lot of day scholars who were hosts to borders on the KGE and so on, and we really can't have that happening, both because of our risk and their risk. And I will come to some of that um, in a moment. Um, so ideally, day scholars who don't, do not live in the KGE uh, should move into boarding. Um, if there are any parents who I am speaking to this evening who um, are disturbed by this, please talk to me. Um, we really do need to try and uh, keep this, uh, the, the, the risk profile of outsiders to an absolute, uh, absolute minimum. Um, many of you have asked questions with regard to uh, fees, and the fees will be levied at a 80% of the boarding fees and the day fees, you have already been uh, billed for 80% uh, of that, and we will therefore be billing just another 16%. And the amounts will reflect on the invoices shortly and have been carefully cal calculated. I must uh, point out that um, I really do appreciate and understand that uh, the country is under pressure, all businesses are under pressure, and uh, we too are under pressure. Our fixed costs have remained largely um, fixed uh, by virtue of definition. We've cut as many variable costs back as possible, but, um, and we've had teachers' salaries cut, they are still cut, um, and uh, so everybody really is, um, you know, pulling hard, but our fixed costs, namely staff costs, are, very, are a very high proportion of our total costs. Um, and for that reason, um, we are unable to gr um, uh, um, grant as much relief as we would like to, uh, to grant. But uh, I understand you've got counter arguments because your own uh, situations are not easy either. Um, so the borders, they, we accommodated in all four boarding houses according to capacity. And what I mean by that is that seniority and um, grades and privilege and all those things are out of the window. Um, what is the primary concern is the risk of cross-infection and the ability for us to maintain social distancing even in the boarding houses. Now, as I said just now, after two weeks, the social distancing in the boarding houses, um, we've been, been able to be far more relaxed because um, the uh, children um, I literally can only, uh, there's no risk of cross-infection. Um, so for the first two weeks after the 21st, uh, we can, fit, uh, we can um, expect a much uh, uh, more firm approach to the boarding houses. And it's unfortunate if some of the seniors end up in so-called junior boarding houses, but that's just the nature of the beast while we're trying to maintain social distancing um, in, as so far as we possibly can. Um, the uh, 18th of September, and this is another controversial one, um, will, uh, the uh, remote learning will stop and um, absentees will be treated as such with as much support as possible. And um, I need to explain that very, very carefully. We're not trying to hold a gun to anybody's head. It's just that you will see from any pictures you've seen of the teachers and maybe even myself this evening, we're absolutely haggard. And the capacity to offer um, online lessons and face-to-face -face lessons and keep all these balls in the air is simply, um, it, it is impossible. And schools who have tried to do it um, have actually fallen on their own swords. So I really, um, we are having to uh, switch off online teaching per se on the 18th of September. Um, Teams uh, was designed 
as a tool to assist uh, um, teachers in effectively delivering uh, classroom um, methodology and pedagogy. It was never designed as a fully remote learning tool. So we've been using quite a blunt instrument to do a sterling job of um, delivering our, our syllabus remotely. And uh, what we will do is when I say that people will be treated as absentees, many of your children have had um, malaria or they've been sick or they've had to go to doctor's appointment. And obviously, the, as absentees, um, we provide as much support as we possibly um, can, but um, that, that we, can't, uh, a, 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 we can't provide full-on digital lessons during this time. So I, I know that's a bit of a concern for some of you, but that is really, unfortunately, the way it is. Um, I need to give you a reassurance. The assessment schedule, we're supposed to end a cycle um, just before when there was supposed to be a midterm break. And uh, what we found is some pupils have dealt incredibly well with um, uh, remote learning, and other pupils who were doing well have completely fallen through the cracks. Um, some of you might, got, have, might have got reports which uh, said um, NA which, uh, or NE, not engaged. And for various reasons, um, we really had to, uh, um, some pupils really have battled. So we're going to have to engage in a um, diverse approach to teaching um, and get the pupils where they need to be and make sure that we um, are able to promote people as they would have been promoted, having completed the year as best as we possibly can um, by the end of the year. So we will um, make every effort to catch up as best as we possibly can. All right, um, I've been talking like a Gatling gun. Um, I have I've developed a set of 18 questions, which are the answers to which were prepared for the original cohort who came back. Um, we're busy updating these answers for the current cohort, and by the close of business tomorrow, um, there will be a, um, an update on the, um, uh, published on the internet. Um, I've got four questions I would like to address, um, and I hope you're writing down your questions so when I'm finished uh, um, presenting, you can, um, uh, we can pick it up from there. Um, so the, the four questions, is my child at risk from a health perspective? And uh, all the research, and there's been more research in the past five months, is that young people are not at risk. Um, um, no, I can't see completely not at risk, but they're at very small risk. If you ask my personal opinion, and it's unverified and unmedical, I think we've had cases of asymptomatic um, COVID on this campus um, amongst our pupil population who have completely recovered. Um, and, uh, and that's just an opinion, um, but it is, uh, it, it's probably what, it, what, what has happened um, if you had to look at the incidents around the world, but it may not have happened. Even if a young person does become symptomatic, then um, we've got the, the, the chances of serious illness are, 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 are minimal. And uh, around the world that now, they're not even test, testing people who are symptomatic unless they are really ill. Um, and I've got uh, friends and acquaintances who report from the UK, for example, that um, they wouldn't even test a person and, and just said, an you need an ambulance, don't phone us. Um, we fortunately, in the way at Zambia is managing this uh, um, situation, is just so much um, uh, better uh, under the current circumstances. Um, unfortunately, when we brought the children back originally, there were 274 active cases. When we brought them back after the holidays, it, was about, uh, it had peaked to 2,000 and went back down to um, about 300. At the moment, as of yesterday, um, it was teetering back towards 1,000. So we certainly cannot ignore this, but I would rather take as strong measure as possible and uh, shoot a sparrow with a shotgun um, to uh, bleed in an allergy. 
Um, so I've explained what the children are doing to manage a risk every day. Um, if it was, I could show you a video of we've got new wash basins um, permanently built into the school, um, and uh, that uh, that little acronym that I've developed, um, which uh, talks about uh, um, wearing masks, social distancing, uh, and so on, um, is really fundamental to what we are uh, doing um, at the moment. Um, so uh, the um, every morning the guys are tested. Um, for uh, for any symptoms, and uh, we do our registers according to that uh, that tests, and um, and and that well, that's how we're managing the risk, and we're going into really strict periods every two weeks after we receive children back. Um, so this uh, question nine is an incredibly topical uh, question at the moment, because you would have received a letter from me earlier on today to say that um, uh, uh, this isn't exactly the answer to the question. It was um, one step removed. So there was a child in Sulwesi whose relative was found to um, have tested positive when they were trying to leave the country. Um, and uh, the, pr a week prior to that test being positive, this child was um, in contact with the uh, kids here. It's the second time it's happened uh, since we started uh, um, bringing children back. And uh, this morning I um, had an assembly and all the people who said that they've spent um, more than 15 minutes within one to one and a half meters of this child who's a day scholar um, had to uh, let me know. They stayed behind, there were 24 pupils and I have um, the day scholars, um, have been notified to start filling in that uh, COVID tracking form and the borders um, will be filling in the COVID tracking form and the 18 borders or so, I'll send a letter to the parents tomorrow morning to say, listen, your child thought that in the first week of school, which is um, over seven days ago by tomorrow, um, they might have been in contact with this person who might have been in contact with um, his grandmother when she was positive over a week ago. So it's another case of sort of using a show to kill the sparrow. And um, it's, it's really important uh, um, uh, to, for us to, to take these things as serious as we possibly can. And then my last point is, does your child need a laptop? Um, these, this, one of the positive things coming out of this COVID situation is that um, uh, teaching and learning has been revolutionized forever. And we will increasingly be using Teams and other um, platforms such as um, Nearpod and uh, OneNote um, as the way we operate, um, as we will be doing with regard to parents' meetings into the future and so on. Um, so if your child does have a laptop, please um, let them bring them to school. When, if they don't, they can use their devices um, and we, are, uh, we will be in a position to say to them that when a child needs a, um, a, a, a device, the teacher can say, okay, take down your, um, uh, um, take down your, uh, uh, out your cell phones and you can go on from there. All right, so um, ladies and gents, um, I'm a very happy, I would prefer um, people to, uh, to, to ask their questions on the chat group. Um, one person said they can't hear me. I think everybody else can, otherwise I would have been wasting a lot of hot air um, and giving my computer the potential of COVID for uh, the last uh, 30 minutes. Um, but if I can, um, I've got another question that says, is there enough space in the boarding house for those day scholars who don't live in the KGE? The answer is almost certainly yes. So if you can send me an email um, tomorrow morning uh, or this evening, I will um, pick up on that. Um, are there any other questions? Um, I'm going to stop presenting. I will update this, um, the question and answer session tomorrow morning and um, I will then be able to have a better chance to see your hands going up or any questions that you might have. 
Um, let me just get back to the chat. Okay. Um, I don't see any questions, any comments. My own voice is ringing in my ears. Somebody say something. I would love to hear from somebody. I've admitted a couple more people. Um, I just, I'm admitting some more. Um, I've unmuted all participants if you would like to volunteer a contribution. It was very difficult being quiet for so long. I beg your pardon? It was very difficult having to be quiet for so, for so long. Uh, I tell you what, it's been difficult to talk so, for so long without seeing any audience uh, a participation and facial uh, expression. Oh. Okay, be careful of what you say, you're all unmuted. Good evening, Mr. Clock. So, yeah, hi. So what I've done now is um, I'm going to mute everybody again, but I'm going to allow you to unmute yourselves. So um, if you do want to say something, um, please just click the unmute button and uh, go ahead with any question you may have for me. Hello, Mr. Stack. Hello, Barbara. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Lovely to be talking yeah. to parents and welcoming students back. Yeah, uh, a quick one though, even though I'm not sure whether you'll be able to answer it. I wanted to find out whether Mary, Mary Beg is able to accept non-Zambian medical insurance. Um, non the situation with Mary Beg, I can probably say, um, uh, I can probably give you a fairly good answer there. And the answer is unlikely. Mm -hmm. So what you would need to do is settle the bill with Mary Beg and then claim back from your insurance. And they will provide Yeah, the problem, yeah, the problem is that yeah, the problem I experienced before was that was that they don't give me an invoice per se. So I cannot claim back from insurance without an invoice. They were saying the invoice the school, not me. Yes, I believe we've resolved that problem. And could you email okay. me directly if that issue oh. again? Yeah, if that's the case, then that's fine. That's fine. Yes. Because my medical insurance, it, it also caters for international yes. hospitals. No, we, so we, I was not sure whether that made they can accept it. No, we, right. we, we have a much better relationship, and I'm quite sure that um, that, that problem will be resolved. I've got a question. Oh, thank you so much. It says, um, um, are there, okay, that's good, I've answered that one. Um, the cleaners and kitchen staff in contact with the boarders. So basically what is happening at the moment is the cleaners and the kitchen staff are being screened daily as they come in. And then um, all the, the cleaning staff um, and the kitchen staff have to vacate the dining room before the children are allowed in. So um, they're behind a barrier, they serve the food from a behind a barrier and they don't clear, they don't come into the dining hall. They remain in the kitchen while the, um, the, the while the kitchen staff are in operation. Similarly, with the cleaning staff, the, when the cleaning staff are admitted, the boarding the, the uh, boarding kids all have to be out of the boarding house. So we try and uh, minimise that contact. Um, if a child tests positive, um, I see there's a question on the group. Um, if a child tests positive, so the, the, the decision framework is as follows. Um, they're screened on entry, and if there's a concern, the teacher refers it immediately to the nurse. The nurse, if they're concerned, refers it immediately to Mary Begg. If doctor does an assessment, if the doctor does an assessment, that um, child is then quarantined and a test is done. If the child is positive, then, um, and a if the child is positive and asymptomatic, well, firstly, we'll con uh, contact the parents, and um, we do have the facility, a six-bed facility to, to accommodate um, boys and a six-bed facility to accommodate girls, 
uh, which fortunately have not yet been used. But we would do that in conjunction with the parents. The only thing that we've had to deal with is one step removed. In other words, children who or pupils who have been in contact with a relative who's proved positive, and neither of those instances, and there's been a staff incident um, with that as well, but none of them have um, resulted in any positive cases on the campus. Um, I've done that one, but uh, well, the cubicle. So um, yes, so the, the question, are dorms cubicles separated? So the, the minimum distance between children's uh, backs on their beds is um, at least one to one and a half meters. Um, we are trying to uh, get into a situation where no children um, are sharing a room. Although they would be sharing and they would be over a meter apart, we would prefer children not to share a room and the cubicles are maintained at um, uh, a very aerated and um, the kids are, are, are the uh, minimum prescribed distance away from each other. Um, as of this afternoon, there was a possibility that two senior girls might have to share, but maybe we'll move some of them to the junior boarding house so that they are in open spaces. Um, will I be notified immediately if your child, you will be notified immediately and, um, the, and you will be allowed to uh, fetch them from the college. The only um, thing I need to say to, in answer to that is um, we, but it is a notifiable um, disease. So if there's a positive case, we've got to notify the authorities and there is a regulation that is not being enforced at the moment, which um, doesn't allow positive cases to be uh, moved across provincial boundaries. But I really don't think that's much of an issue. Um, and uh, you will be the first to be notified probably before me because the doctor will know before I know. And that is the protocol involved. And we will make a joint decision on how to handle that, uh, how to handle that situation. Um, with the step one um, removed, in other words, the children who today told me they may have been in contact with this child um, for more than 15 minutes um, in the last uh, week, um, I will notify you within 24 hours, and there are 18 boarders I will notify, but none of those children have shown any symptoms whatsoever. Um, I've just run out of uh, hours in the day to try and uh, notify parents. The day scholar parents, there were six of them, I think, they have been notified, and uh, the prescribed um, uh, treatment is that we just observe, and we are going the additional measure of actually writing it on our observation um, on, um, on the, uh, with that, ni that 19, uh, COVID-19 um, monitoring sheet. And the next question is, do you have a written school protocol on, the, on uh, C19 prevention? prevention? Um, we do, and it's being redrafted to cater for the current circumstance and will be published before the end of Friday. Um, how is lunch being coordinated since the both the say scholars on one area? Yeah, the, the, the lunch, um, once we've declared the day scholar, the two venues, KGE and um, the uh, Calumbila safe zones, there is no issue with them mixing. Um, I will, ref and, and so far, the one day scholar we do have has been um, in a, um, a declared safe environment with, a, with, a, with commitment. What is going to happen though, and logistically, um, I, I see that, um, sorry, one person waiting here. Um, logistically, I see that we, Mr. Champuka and Mr. Um, Fisser are both online. What we are going to have to do is work out how we're going to keep the children coming back because the, you can understand the kids who are being here for two weeks are feeling very, relatively safe. They know their mates are safe, they know they, they, they are safe. Um, now they're a bit nervous about all the other children coming through and we're going to have to stagger um, um, meal times to try and maintain that distance for a period of uh, two weeks. And uh, we've done it before, we'll do it again, um, but it will be logistically challenging. If I can just ask uh, Mr. Champuka and Mr. Fisser to place that um, on our discussion list for tomorrow morning 
so we have a plan of action in place before a Sunday evening. Um, the new the kids normally use fingerprint scanner for their meals. Has this been stopped? That is a um, very interesting question. Um, it hasn't been stopped, and if that uh, I know at some universities they've stopped that, um, and that the KGE they've stopped it. And I am uh, um, I'm happy to to look at that. Um, Mr. Chapuka, could I ask you to place that on the question list? I, I thought about it yesterday when I went for a meal and used my fingerprint. Um, have we got sufficient uh, hand sanitizers and how many masks do you recommend? Um, we do have um, liters and liters of sanitizer and I re we recommend four washable masks when your children return. Um, the, uh, the question, the day scholars have been stopped at going to town. Um, yeah, absolutely. The, 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 the day scholars are having to follow the protocol put in place by FQM. And we've just got mutual trust between those uh, protocols. And um, I mean, in my trips into town for shopping and so on, um, it is very unusual and we're going to um, clamp down on that once again. In terms of the borders going into town, um, they are not allowed to go into town. We have picked up things when they've run out and also asked the tuck shop to um, cater to their needs. Um, and uh, yeah, we, we, we've, we've taken that approach and so far it's worked. Um, the country is opening up, I believe. Uh, Zazu swimming galas will go ahead. Um, absolutely. Um, I do not believe so. The Zazu Swimming Galas, we do not yet have authority for that. Um, I, we, I know we were supposed to have hosted a gala um, next weekend. That has definitely been um, cancelled. And as soon as we are allowed to move about and travel, uh, we will do so uh, with the utmost protection, particularly of the examining classes. Do you ensure round the clock confirmation to your COVID-19 prevention policies? Um, that's a, a very uh, um, uh, interesting question. And uh, those of you who've got more than two children in the house, or one or more child, know how difficult this is. So um, the, uh, in the first two weeks when the kids come back, um, we, we are very, very vigilant and moaning. In the second two weeks, once we know that our pods are all safe. Um, it really is, uh, it's a little more relaxed. Quite frankly, um, my motto is uh, um, MM, MM, movement means masks. So when you are moving, and as soon as I um, leave this office, um, as soon as my legs start uh, working, um, I put on a mask. Um, when we're standing and talking, I put on a mask. The school got a fright this morning at the assembly when I explained to them that um, we had a one step remove situation that we had to manage and um, their, their masks are very much on their faces. So um, I said earlier on, we can do nothing to, we can do um, nothing to guarantee 100% safety, but we can do everything we can to be as safe as possible. Um, to give one perspective, um, the situation with uh, uh, malaria is, I don't know how many times worse, we've got the stats. Um, the risk of a teenager um, having a serious illness as a result of malaria is infinitesimally higher than the risk of any serious um, condition evolving from COVID. Um, so that just sort of gives us a bit of perspective. Um, the plans to keep the busy children busy over the weekend, 10 weeks is a long time to be away from home and boredom doesn't just lead to misery, it also, um, uh, the devil makes um, work for idle hands. So yes, um, that's now Mr. Fiss's, largely Mr. Fiss's responsibility, but also the responsibility of the boarding staff to, and the Saturday CCAs um, are, uh, are fully in, uh, in force. We're now going to have to have more weekend CCAs um, and involvement for the children 
particularly the year nines who've been here for even longer and their camps. Um, I haven't seen yet of Miss Cavanas online, but uh, the idea of uh, taking the kids for overnight trips to um, the dam and so on are all uh, um, uh, action plans which we've got to put in place and measure it out into the future. Um, yeah, so uh, um, have you got plans? Yes, will the borders allow to receive items from DHL? Absolutely. Um, they, uh, um, uh, and, and if they don't need stuff for the, that the tuck shop doesn't offer to, absolutely no problem. And um, we're very communicative. I mean, under these circumstances, honestly, if a child um, said to me, oh, sir, won't you please get me some toothpaste of a particular flavor because of whatever gum condition, I would do it with absolute pleasure. I'm trying to restrict myself to one trip um, every week at the most, but one trip every two weeks into town. And um, there's always somebody going in and out and parents really do not need to stress about that. We also have a driver who suits up and goes in and uh, will cater to your needs. All right. Um, I, one person is waiting. Sorry, you've been waiting for a while, Miss, uh, um, that's Mr. or Mrs. Sakala. Um, we've got 45 out of the 110 or so uh, people who are coming back. Um, and uh, I, yeah, I mean, I, as, we, as we end off, if anybody else wants to make any comment, um, I would welcome your contribution. Um, if not, I will remain online for a while while people leave. Um, I do, would like to say that um, uh, as we, um, uh, send somebody yes we'll collect if you don't use mercury or dhl we'll collect no worries um the if i were to compare i've been in chats with many of my colleagues both in southern africa zimbabwe south africa and in the uk and um the manner in which uh zambia and the manner in which trident has uh, succeeded in bringing um so far 148 or so pupils onto campus and keeping things going um, in a, a digital environment um, is really um, as good as, if not better than uh, any place um, with our Neopod, OneNote and uh, Teams approach with our weekly uh, uh, contribution. Um, but I do need to acknowledge the enormous um, uh, pressure that this has placed on you as parents and as, uh, as pupils. You, your, we all have different roles in life, and your role is not to be um, a teacher and a supervisor. That's why you mandate us to do it. Your role is to be a parent and a loving and caring and supportive parent. And I really do appreciate that not, not only the financial contribution, but the emotional uh, strain on, on uh, your, the children and on yourselves has been extreme. And we really are working tirelessly to get things back into some sort of a state of normality. Um, and I also need to say from the, from the college team point of view, um, I think I said it earlier and I said it again, the teachers are haggard. Um, we're not trained at online teaching. Um, we're not an online teaching college. Um, we've done, we've made, done the very best we can with the tools available, with the best interests of the children at heart. And uh, hopefully, um, it's going to pay dividends into the future. Um, I will say that uh, as of today, we actually have a waiting list um, for uh, grade seven for next year, which is uh, quite unheard of. Um, and uh, we're now having to, people racing to pay their deposits um, for the first uh, 50 people to be admitted. Um, but uh, we've actually got 58 uh, pupils who are on our list as confirmed coming for next year. So there are some good news stories, and um, I hope we, this next stage will be a good news, uh, a good, um, uh, news story as well. There's a question that I do try and answer about um, the hygienic um, uh, kitchens. The staff have been upgraded, and there is extra cleaning taking place. 
Um, I think uh, Mrs. Katete is online as well. Sarah, if you could please just confirm that what I'm saying is the absolute truth. We went very deeply into the cleaning um, of the bathrooms when the last uh, um, avalanche of uh, cats arrived. And now that we have got, we're shepherding in um, your children, excuse me referring to them as shepherding cats, um, we need to make sure that uh, the hygiene in the uh, pollution facilities is impeccable. Um, if I could put that on your to-do list, Sarah. All right. Ladies and gents, uh, I had allocated uh, um, an hour. We've got eight minutes left. Um, in the meanwhile, encourage your children to vote for their mentors. The voting is coming in online, and uh, we will be having lots more parents meeting in 2021. Um, taking advantage of this digital medium. And um, we do hope you, that if you do have any concerns, talk to other parents who have sent their kids back for the exams. Um, I must say we really, really, really are anxious about not losing any exams. And uh, so far, the highest alert that we have had is um, one staff member um, who was in contact with somebody who subsequently proved positive, and that was at the beginning of August in the holidays, and two pupils, one from Lusaka and now one from Sulwesi, and both have been managed according to policy and have resulted in no further um, anxiety. And I would like to continue to maintain the school in a state of outstanding education uh, with minimal anxiety. All right, if you um, would like to say anything, please do. Otherwise, if you'd like to leave the meeting, I will stay online for a, um, a few minutes longer um, to see if any of you would like to ask me any questions uh, personally. And please don't hesitate Hello. to ask for a message. Hello. Yes, carry on, Barbara. Yeah, uh, is it okay if I bring disposable mask? To break, yes, um, personally, I prefer the disposable masks because uh, mm -hmm. you talk a lot easier through them and they don't suffocate you in the classroom. So if you bring a child a stock of disposable masks, then I am perfectly, perfectly happy with that. Yeah, because what I was thinking, is, yeah, we, we, we can bring, I agree you are saying you have like 10 weeks and 10 weeks, if I can bring a box of 100 masks. That would be perfect. Okay. Just don't let your child you. hand them out to everyone else, unless she loves it. Yeah, I will let you. Yeah, but I will bring the, the, the disposable and I will bring the washable ones to spares, just in case. Fantastic. Excellent. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Goodbye. Evening. Bye. Evening, Mr. Clark. Hello, Mr. Jordan. How are you? Fine, thank you. Um, I believe that there are some Trident masks that are there as well, um, obviously for purchase or something. What yes. are they made of? How? What, yeah, could you give me more information on those? Okay. Um, there are Trident masks available um, for anybody who comes into the admin block and was forgotten or lost or whatever. Um, we're not penny pinching around that issue. Um, so if you would like to reserve um, some of the masks, then please send Eunice a message and we will give those, um, uh, hand them on. Um, I think there's a minimal cost associated to them, um, but we do have masks that we can, I think it's about 10 or 15 kwacha uh, for a mask, um, but we won't have enough to give four to everybody who comes on Saturday, on Sunday and Monday, um, but we do have in case there's a problem. Okay, but um, the material that they're made of, um, that's what I wanted to know a little more about. Yes, look, um, it, it, we, we got it certified and um, it was acceptable to the people making it. Um, it's heavier than this, but I don't know if it's, it's been clinically proven in a sneeze chamber, um, but it's, it's, um, it's certainly acceptable. Okay, thank you very much. Um, the other question I had was the last time we had the meeting in Lusaka, um, we had discussions about the malaria prevention that the school was taking. Um, I wanted to find out if anything else has changed since then in what the school is doing to help make this better. Okay, 
Um, I know that repairs have been undertaken to all the masts, to all the uh, nets, and um, um, Mrs. Katete, if we could just please confirm, and I'll write a note that um, there is um, a mosquito spray at both at the dining hall and uh, as they come out of the boarding houses. And it's very important that the boarding staff make sure that the children spray, particularly now that we're in rainy season, we had our first rains today before they come to, to dinner. Because um, the, the walk from the boarding houses to the dining hall is definitely the highest risk. And those will be in place by the time um, your children come back. I'll make a note again. Thank you. All right, if there are no further questions, um, I see Vincent Miranda is a late joiner. Um, if there are no further questions, I'll focus um, on, um, I've got three action points, updating those questions making sure that the bathrooms are spotless and um, making sure that there's mosquito spray um, in the boarding house and in the um, uh, dining hall. I uh, see uh, the question about laptops, please, as a resurfaced again, if your can child can bring a laptop, it's, it would be great, we would be grateful but please make sure they come with a strong lock and lock it in their uh, um, lockers. We can't guarantee the safety. The school uniform shop, very good question. Um, um, the uh, school uniform shop um, will be open to receive the children. I will send a, um, I will send a notice tomorrow um, notifying you of the times. Um, are buffs acceptable? Uh, buffs are acceptable. I will just say that summer has hit um, at Sulwesi. And um, I wore a buff, um, but in the past few weeks, um, I, I couldn't take the heat around my neck. And for those who don't know, buffs are what cyclists wear to keep dust out of their face. So hopefully they'll keep COVID away too. I see we still have 30 people lingering. We're all going to have a cup of coffee here or a glass of wine together. Ladies and gents, I'm going to end the meeting. Um, if you do have any concerns, um, please email me or my team. These are difficult times and we will do all we can to um, address those concerns. Um, I'm going to end the meeting now and uh, wish you all a very uh, safe evening. And thank you for your support in bringing our, your children back. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye, Mr. Clark. Clark. Bye, bye bye. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Clark. You're welcome. Thank you. Cheers.